Hello everyone, welcome to my review of Season 2, Episode 5 of Supergirl, titled Crossfire. Before I go any further, I just want to say that there will be spoilers in this review. So in this episode, we get a lot of character development when it comes to the storyline. You get to see Mon-El be kind of integrated into human society for the first time. And it's very interesting how the show goes about it, or at least how Kara goes about it. She decides she's going to get him a job at Kako and kind of have him go the same route that she went when it came to integrating with humanity. He is going to work there, he's going to wear the glasses, he's going to kind of try to fit in the same way that she has fit in. And what we find in the episode is that it didn't really work out well. And I think that has to do with the fact that even though he is an alien, even though he is very similar to Karen in the sense that they have some of the same abilities, he is in his own individual person. The one problem I have with the whole Monel trying to integrate with humanity is that I feel like a lot of these rudimentary type things could have been taught to him while he was at the DEO. Like, I felt like Wynn should have really taught him a lot of the basics when it came to interacting with humanity, considering that they did already go out and interact with humanity. Granted, in this episode, a lot of it was used for physical humor and humor in general, which gave a lot of lightness to the episode. But switching gears to, I guess, a more serious character note is Alex is dealing with a lot of internal questioning and confusion and frustration, and she's really trying to find out who she is, specifically when it comes to her sexuality. She is trying to come to grips with who she is as a person. And it's a very interesting episode from that regard, at least for me personally. And in this episode, I thought we got some really genuine good character stuff when it came to her. Specifically, when it came to her interactions with Maggie Sawyer, who she does have these romantic feelings for, and we've seen that in the previous episode. But in this episode, we really see her trying to accept that and trying to be okay with that because she's never been open when it, comes, when it has come to her sexuality. And that's a very interesting. And there was a scene at the end of this episode which I felt was very genuine where she was naturally confused and flustered and nervous when it came to opening up about this to someone else. The one main issue I have with that is not anything to do with her sexuality at all. It's the manner in which they kind of went about it a little bit, specifically when it came to her interaction with Maggie Sawyer, because as we saw in the previous episode, she found out that Maggie Sawyer has a girlfriend, a significant other, and in this episode, they very easily, very kind of lazily just wrote that out completely, paving the way for the Maggie Sawyer and Alex Danvers relationship, which I believe we all knew was going to happen. They kind of rushed it a little bit because as a viewer, I'm watching and I'm like, why even introduce the idea that Maggie Sawyer is seeing someone else when you're just going to write it out anyway? I understand they did it so that we could see Alex's jealousy and sadness about it. We already kind of knew what her emotions were when it came to Maggie. So why even have that in there at all? I felt was kind of pointless. But it's going to be interesting to see where they go with the Maggie Sawyer and Alex Danvers relationship. Because when it comes to these superhero television shows, the romantic relationships are very difficult to pull off and they usually don't last very long. As we saw in the whole first season where they kind of built up this romantic relationship between Kara and, and Jimmy, and then they kind of just wrote it off at the beginning of this season. And speaking of Jimmy Olsen, in this episode he decides that he has had enough of being this kind of helpless individual when it comes to being friends with these superheroes. He now wants to take matters into his own hands. He wants to be more active when it comes to fighting evil and fighting bad guys and stuff like that. He wants to essentially become a vigilante. And while that's a very interesting thing, I'm wondering, does he actually have the capabilities of doing so. Is he trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat in any way? As we saw in this episode, he does indeed have access to create some type of protective suit. And through his friendship with Wynn and Wynn's connection with the DEO, he's going to be able to create him a suit. 
And if you paid attention in between last season and this season when it came to the news and rumors and all the information coming out about the show, they very much hinted at that Jimmy Olsen was going to become the vigilante or the superhero, the Guardian. And the one thing I'm curious about when it comes to this whole developing the suit for Jimmy Olsen is Wynn just going to steal the materials from the DEO? I would assume that the DEO would have at least some type of security system when it came to their equipment, specifically their science equipment, their really heavy state-of-the-art stuff, the stuff that people would want to steal. But with this show, you have to suspend that disbelief, or you have to assume that Wynn's going to be able to construct a suit for Jimmy probably pretty easily. Speaking of kind of upper echelon technology, in this episode there is a gang roaming around with these super-powered weaponry. They have these weapons that can essentially fight aliens and fight metahumans. And it's very interesting the kind of message they utilize in this episode because it is very much an allegory or a metaphor when it comes to, I guess, real-life arguments when it comes to gun control and weapon control and things of that nature. And I think Supergirl is very much on the side of some type of weapon control, specifically when it comes to these very high-powered, probably experimental weapons that this group has. And they can go around and do a lot of significant damage. They can crash buildings, they can probably kill a lot of people very quickly. So these weapons that they have their hands on can be even more deadly in the hands of other people as well. And what is interesting about these weapons is that they are provided to them by Cadmus. In this episode, we find out that the head of Cadmus that we've been seeing for a few episodes now is actually Lena Luthor's mother, which was very, very interesting because is that her biological mother? Is that her adopted mother? Essentially, is that the mother of Lex Luthor? Also, what type of relationship do they have? Is it contentious? Is it friendly? Are they working together? I think those are all things we're probably going to see in subsequent episodes. Overall, I have to say, it was a pretty decent episode of Supergirl. It wasn't fantastic. Like I said, there was a lot of character things when it came to Supergirl and mon -El, Alex and Maggie. And we also got that nice kind of reveal at the end when it came to the head of Cadmus. But I am specifically happy that they are making Jimmy Olsen a more active character because he's kind of just sitting back and working at CatCo now and he's not really taking an active part when it comes to Supergirl's life because I think they really relied on the romance when it came to those two characters interaction but now that if he's going to get in the vigilante or superhero game there's going to be a lot more interaction between the two and it's going to be very interesting to see what she thinks of Jimmy Olsen and his new foray into crime fighting. This has been my review of season 2 episode 5 of Supergirl titled Crossfire. If you like this video, please check out my other episode reviews for the other comic book related television series.